there. Let's get down to what you're doing. Tell us about your crowdsourcing idea. Well, there's a, uh, you know, many people may not necessarily be aware, but a lot of startups have been in other jurisdictions, in other countries around the world, been able to rely on the power of the crowd, as it's called, for people to tip in money uh, and, you know, to get a slice of equity uh, in startups in particular. And uh, while, uh, you know, our um, nearest neighbour, New Zealand, has got that, that uh, humming along quite nicely, in Australia we haven't been able to do it because uh, to source funds from the crowd on, through an online platform uh, is something that a lot of people uh, consider would breach corporations law. So we actually, when we were in government, we tasked up the uh, Corporations and Markets Advisory Committee to look into, well, what are other countries doing on crowdsource equity funding and how can we bring it into play here? So I've been talking with a lot of startups and I was actually at the uh, AVCAL uh, you know, showcase here in Canberra today, which is the um, venture capital and private equity uh, players that are in Canberra to basically raise awareness amongst politicians about the need to be able to fund startups. So we've been okay. working on that uh, quite a bit and I'm hoping that we'll be able to make an announcement soon on this space from the federal opposition perspective. Now it's an interesting one. I had Mark Carnegie on last night, venture capitalist and uh, mm. the winner of his latest Carnegie's Den who, who bemoaned how difficult it was to get money out there. We have lots of good ideas. Yeah. But crowdsourcing is, is being done. I thought it was pretty well an internet thing you couldn't stop stop it, but is it technically like an IPO, raising money and you're subject to corporations law? I mean, has anyone really run into a problem on it? And that's, that's been the issue that uh, while no one's necessarily run into a problem, Janine, no one wants to be the first one to own the honour of having that problem. And uh, what we really do need to do is see um, you know, what can be done in terms of how much money can be raised on online platforms, how much can individual investors tip in. Uh, CAMAC uh, you know, basically came up with a recommendation that the maximum you could tip in uh, through an online platform in any given 12-month period is $10,000 spread over, uh, you know, four, you know, roughly four uh, options. Uh, and so there are some things there, and they also recommended some other um, uh, avenues as to how startups could get the money, which startups have said to the federal opposition and to me in, in the um, stakeholder consultations I've been carrying out. It's a bit unwieldy, it's a bit difficult, and we're looking as a federal opposition of how can we put the best platform in place that recognises that these, this is risky investment, uh, puts in place some consumer protection, but gives access to capital, much needed capital for startups that have gone through the capital that they would have got from friends and family, and they need to really plug a sort of funding black hole that's a two million to five million mark. And that's a real challenge, and crowdsource funding could be a way to fix that. I, I understand the challenge, and I understand your intentions are good, but given what we have been through on, um, on problems with people losing money in investments, it, yeah. it is a risky idea, isn't it? I mean, at the moment, the mantra for investors is we want to give you all the protections we can. It seems a little against the current um, mood to be trying to relax them because while most might be genuine attempts for startups, it does open the way for a few shonks in there, doesn't it? And you have to be very mindful of that and you have to put in place a framework that does two things. One, that alerts people uh, to the risk uh, and two, uh, provides protections along the way that they're kept informed and that they know exactly what they're getting into. And some of the recommendations that were put forward, I think, uh, provide a solid platform. For instance, ASIC working with the broader sector to come up with a template disclosure statement so that people are informed of risk, that we uh, raise overall awareness um, of uh, you know, the fact that you can either uh, make a lot of money and support technology that's going to be disruptive and change business models, or it may not end up that you get anything out of it. Um, it is, it, we do need to let people know up front that it is risky and that they go into that investment with their eyes uh, wide open. But as one startup said to me, Janine, they said, so um, let me get this straight. If I had, say, for example, $2,500 and I went to a, a local uh, uh, RSL and put my money into a poker machine, there'd be no restrictions on that. But if I wanted to actually support an investment in a startup that could transform uh, the way that a, a sector works through the application of that technology, um, I wouldn't be able to do it. And so there are some arguments that are being put forward in that space that you're, you're mindful of. But your starting point is absolutely crucial. How do we manage risk?
And just out of interest, given that everybody seems focused on certain issues at the moment, um, are you getting much response on your side or does it sort of go down the list at the moment because they're more interested in whacking them on FOFA? Uh, in terms of in this space, uh, the yeah. sort of crowdsource equity funding area? Yeah, well, look, uh, uh, Chris Bowen as Shadow Treasurer put this you know, firmly on our agenda uh, in response to the budget in, in May. You know, people say, oh, why don't oppositions put forward policy agendas? Well, we certainly said that innovation is one of those areas that can drive growth in the economy, and this is one space out of many um, that we do need to you know, get some movement on. The government's had the CAMAC report since May. They're, apart from you know, making some positive sounds, they haven't really done much uh, in saying, well, this is the framework we reckon we can take forward. Um, we've been talking with the startup sector. There is a lot of interest on our side. Um, we uh, hope to make announcements in the next few weeks uh, in relation to this uh, to basically push the, uh, push the barrow and get some traction uh, here because we think it's an important source of capital for, for startups and it needs, to, it needs work sooner rather than later. I okay. met with one firm, Janine, okay. that's relocating to New Zealand because they can't get the uh, capital in this way and uh, we do need to act on it. Oh, especially if we're losing a brain drain to New Zealand. It's a contradiction yeah. in terms, I think. Um, what was it? Lift the... No, I won't say those jokes. But good luck with it. As I said, we support it here. We were talking to Mark Carnegie last night and we're doing our bit, so I'm glad you're doing yours. Nice to talk to you, Ed.